a WPC power driver board. This one's a Dash 3 model, and the customer sent this with the problem specification is that none of the flashers in the back box are working. So I've already gone around the board and tested all the fuses. Even though this is a GI fuse, I still test all the fuses. So it takes me about 10 seconds to go around to each fuse and test each fuse. So all the fuses are good. So the next thing to do is test all the transistors. All, the, all of these transistors, including the lamp matrix transistors, can be tested in about three seconds. And this is how you do it. Meter set to continuity. Then you put one lead on board ground. I'm down here in the lower left-hand corner. Yeah. And then you just simply rake the red probe across the pins that drive all these transistors, like this. Oh, I got a beep there. Let me go through and do the rest of them. So, got no continuity for any of those pins, including these lamp matrix pins, but I did get some beeps over here. So the transistor that drives this pin is shorted. And this one also, this one's okay. And the last one is shorted also. Now, the way we used to do this in the slower days was like this. This works the same way. It just takes, it takes less time to rake these pins to know that you've got a problem. And then you can go figure out exactly which ones are shorted. So I've got three of them that are shorted here. So that probably means that there's more going on on this board, but it may just mean that these individual ones are shorter. Now I put these gold marks next to these to show you which ones I was gonna test. And uh, I've looked at the back of these boards so many times, I know that this is a pre-drive transistor. And then this is the tip 102 pre-drive, tip 102 pre-drive, et cetera, et cetera. I'm gonna show you how to easily take a tip 102 out of a board. So this is a JBC uh, iron tip. And I know this transistor is shorted, so it's got to come out. And I would normally have my fan going. And I'm just going to grab this transistor from the other side. It's got a lot of solder on it. Sort of splash the heat back and forth. And out it comes. Easy peasy. Now it's time to use a Hako to get in there and clean up the hole. It just puts less, less uh, heat stress on the hole overall and does a nicer job. So I'll do the rest of these and then we'll get back to this board. And here we are on the bench with this power driver board. <clears throat> Boy, I got a little cold. It's just hanging on. And these are the three TIP 102s that I've changed out. After I uh, changed those out, I was testing all the bridge rectifiers on the bench. And BR3, I believe that is, the one with the date on the top, BR4, needed to be changed out also as it had two open legs. I have dated the top of that bridge and the top of C5. Also replaced C4 and C2, which tends to leak. General illumination and power headers all the way around. And I have no shorted on uh, flashers or coils. Let's get it into test. I have my bench WPC MPU with the test ROM in it. And we'll go straight to the test for the power driver board. And get those running. Nine. And the good thing about this ROM is it tests the 16 solenoid circuits and then we can test the I'm going to skip the flashers for now but we can test the general illumination to make sure at no time was any of the traces over to the zero cross circuit damaged now we can test lamps and flashers both at the same time and the flashers are all operating and so are the lamps let's see if there's anything left to test Nope, that is it. This driver board is good to go. I can show you the voltages that it's producing. 
5.06 for the 5, 12 is the regulated 12, 15 is the unregulated 12, 21 and 72 are your flash lamp and your coil voltages. Even though the coil, I guess spec or the schematics, it always says 50 volts for the WPC coils, it is always around 70 volts. And that is it. This thing is ready to go out for a uh, little bath to get rid of some solder flux on the back. But thank you so much for sending it.